Champions Cup draw announced. Everyone, hoo ha! Bulls have got the easier draw, Storm has got the harder draw. Doesn't really matter, we're not going to go past the top eight. <laughs> no, we are not. South African team's dead in the water. If you look at the, the teams they'll be faced uh, with in the, the, the pools, the Champions Cup pools, it's a mess. Uh, I think, if anything, it's actually a good thing for the South African teams because it's giving them this clarity to just focus on the URC because you're not going to get any joy in the Champions Cup. It was always going to be a long shot anyway, traveling to France and playing tough teams abroad. But when you're drawn with teams like uh, La Rochelle, as the Stormers are, uh, you're in hot water there. So, like I said before, send uh, Jimmy Two Guns and the Pumas over to play their away matches, mate, and uh, Stormers concentrate on the URC. Yeah, I think the big thing there is URC, especially post the World Cup, and then look at 24-25 as the year you want to attack the Champions Cup and try and get a home quarterfinal. Right. From there, anything can happen because the final is on neutral venue. Uh, but... Uh, and I mean, we've, we've had the salary cap increase significantly in one year, so in the next couple of years, we may be at a place where you have the finances to actually warrant having bigger squads. But at the moment, as it stands, you just you can't. It'd still be great to have uh, the likes of La Rochelle, uh, Leicester Tigers, Sale or Starb. We don't know which one of the, oh, which two of the four in Cape Town. Coming back. Two yeah. of those games will be here in December and also in January, and that's going to be fantastic. Yes. Uh, uh, just to have those teams play here in terms of variety, and that's what I love about playing in the north. There was no variety in Super Rugby. Yeah. You knew you got the Crusaders, Chiefs and the Brumbies one year, the next year you got the other three. Next year you got the other three. It's the uh, same old. So, I um, love the draw, I love the way they did the draw. They really tried to make it a bit like the Champions League. Shoot it up a bit. Right. Yeah. But, uh, but um, and nice to see the Stormers, you know, Dobbo's big thing is, his five year plan is that they sit at the top of uh, World Club Rugby's table of four and consistently at the top of two mm -hmm. and their big mission is to chase Leinster next year. And I think it's timed it well because uh, there will be a drop off post the World Cup for those Irish players Definitely. that are dominated by Leinster. But uh, that draw uh, released, announced, if you haven't seen it, the details of it, you go to SA Rugby magazine, everything is there. It's a strange kind of draw because there's six teams, Leinster and the Stormers are in the same pool, but because they play together in the URC they don't play each other. And then the top four teams go through from each pool and I think a best place, fifth place playoff. Right. Uh, so I think what you're looking at at best there is, a, is the Bulls and the Stormers making that top four, but having to go away to play a last 16 game. And if they get through that away to play a last eight game, if they get through that away to play a <laughs> semi-final. And if they get through that, my God, they've deserved to be in the final. So on. it's going to be a hell of a tough. URC is where our focus has to be. Yes. Uh, we've got a Curry Cup final this weekend. Ron Pino will turn 40 next year. Mm. He's going to lead the cheaters out. What I've taken from this Curry Cup, uh, Zals, and I just want your view on that, is forget playing the URC and the Champions Cup players in the Curry Cup. Uh, integrate them back from injury if you have to, but let those youngsters play that tournament. We've seen every team, and by and large the Bulls, try and play in all three tournaments with the same players and they've taken a beating this season. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. I think we have to treat it like the Vodacom Cup was treated in years gone by, where it basically became a junior sort of under 25, under 23 tournaments. Uh, and that's where you give your youngsters an opportunity to cut their teeth at the senior professional level. Uh, and I think if anything, the URC guys coming back to play in the Curry Cup and getting smashed by players that are not on the URC radar just goes to show these guys have played what feels like two seasons uninterrupted. Uh, and they need a break. And well, they have played two seasons uninterrupted. And there we go. For our Springboks, they're going to be playing effectively two and a half seasons uninterrupted. It's crazy. Uh, that whole conversion from south to north yeah. meant there was no preseason for our players. Yeah. And uh, it's not making an excuse at all. It's just stating the obvious reality and, and stating the fact that post this World Cup will be the first time that the core of those Springboks will actually get an off season. Yeah. Now is the first time that the URC players will get a type of off season. All Jimmy Steinhouse wants is a game. It's a game. He just, it's not He's got the opposite problem. Of it, okay? <laughs> but uh, great that it's the Pumas against uh, defending their title. Yes. Uh, the Cheetahs. It was the semi-final last year, and then the Pumas stunned them in Bloemfontein. Correct. Uh, I wrote a piece on on Keo.co.za that if there's a World Cup crisis at nine slash ten, I wouldn't look further than picking Ron Pinner. Thirty-nine. He turns fortieth on the tenth of March. Fourth, four hundred plus games, two thousand plus points. 22 points in the semi-final. Everyone's laughing again. November 2020, I wrote, Mornay Stane is starting to roar again. Pick him in the extended squad for the Lions series. People thought I was a fool, a lunatic. They said, bring back Donnie Craven next. 
And when he kicked that winning penalty in the 79th minute, people were like, Morning Stein was always a natural choice. Ruam Pinar, I'm not saying picking ahead of the five that are there at the moment, but we do have something special in a player like that. If there is a crisis, and as uh, the owner of the Sharks, Marco Mazzotti, asked the other day on Twitter, will he be our beaver moment? <laughs> I don't know if he does white bait uh, fishing. But <laughs> I think yes. he does a bit of farming. We can bring him out from uh, Bloemfontein and he can land in Paris, head to the start and just do the business. Yeah, look, I think it's a travesty that Mornay Stein spent most of his last two seasons on ice. For me, he should have been above Chris Smith and uh, Johan Kuisen at the Bulls. Uh, I'm disappointed that he decided to leave the box when he did. Uh, he adds massive value. And for a country that's built their entire rugby legacy on crushing Oaks up front and then kicking your points, we seem to have forgotten that you need goal kickers in big games, especially at World Cups. Ron Pinar can kick points. I think last year the box were messing around with Steven Kitsoff taking kicks at goal. So how is this guy not in the frame given the injury crisis at the moment? He's a guy we definitely look at. It wasn't Kitsy, it was Cheslin Colby. Oh, sorry, close And enough. a Fuff de Klerk, okay? And they did particularly well. Well, uh, They well. kicked at 65% and uh, didn't actually have to rely on kicks. So we lost the one game, won the other one, and there was magnificent interplay magnificent. between a guy called Marnie LeBoc and Demi Willems at Twickenham. Yes. That one too. Yes. Yes. Score, try, try. yes, I remember. All right. Great so time. forget the Champions Cup for now. We'll continue to chat about that. Uh, forget I mean, it like the Stormers have forgotten it. Exactly. They saw that draw and just thought two, <laughs> Goodbye. Big, two big home games, big crowds, <laughs> and a lovely December, January. And then forget about that till May next year when they play the final. Um, tomorrow we'll be chatting a bit about the, uh, the Under-20 World Cup that starts in Cape Town next week. Yes. But international rugby. From the end of the month, it's Full on. It's the Rugby Championship in July, short inversion, three matches each, a couple of friendlies. We play an extra one against Argentina, the yes. Kiwis and Aussies obviously play uh, for the Bledisloe. Uh, one goes across the ditch, it's only two that they'll play though, so uh, Australia's got to win both to win to win that. And then it's warm-up matches all over Europe and then the big, big, big seven weeks at the World Cup in France. It's going to be a rip, it's going to be, for me, probably the best World Cup that there's been if you just see the success of the French teams and how they've been embraced, uh, the top 14 winners to lose, La Rochelle Champions Cup winners, Toulon Challenge Cup winners, the receptions they got back in their hometowns. Now, if that's the preamble to what we're going to expect at a World Cup, it's going to be sensational. So buckle up. Zells will be giving away two tickets to go to the World Cup <laughs> final in France. <laughs> 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 to watch it at Didros. <laughs> at Didros and Stella Bosch. <laughs> but uh, Yo. Eddie Jones speaking a massive game already. I love no, having Eddie, Eddie Jones back on the scene. <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic having Eddie back in the Southern Hemisphere. It's exactly what Australian rugby needs. Somebody with a bit of character, more character than a chair. And mm -hmm. uh, it's fabulous to have him just, uh, sh you know, shooting from the hip and, and saying what he thinks, man. And uh, He's ruffled some feathers over there, and one thing you know is he's a guy who can back up his talk. I mean, uh, Eddie Jones will have a plan, and uh, he'll have a plan to win that World Cup, and he's in a very favourable side of the draw there, so it's going to be interesting. Well, as he said, there shouldn't be expectation. They've won 38% of their games uh, <laughs> over the last four years. He said okay? the Super Rugby teams, the best one has won 50% of the matches, the rest are 40%. Exactly, and they haven't even won 50% because they play <laughs> each other. Each other. For <laughs> That's most their of wins. The season, okay? <laughs> But uh, he's talking about a smash and grab job. Oh, I love that. You know, that, Kitch man. Christie had the ambulance job. Eddie's talking about sneaking in, smashing, grabbing, leaving with the rugby championship, the Bledders Love, and the World Cup. Oh, mate. One country that'll be prepped for smash and grab is South Africa, mate. <laughs> <laughs> we got that coating. <laughs> I reckon the Bledders Love is a possibility. Yes. The World Cup, definitely because of the draw. But not but happening at Loftus Fastball, mate. If he's planning. <laughs> on a winning start in Pretoria, <laughs> I've seen some brilliant Australian teams. World Cup winning teams come to South Africa and get beaten by some pretty, pretty average Springbok sides. Yeah, spot on. It's a bit like the Gold Coast effect on the Springboks. Yeah, I've seen some great box sides go there and take 23 <laughs> points against some pretty shit on these sides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the, the Wallabies are not going to win the opener, uh, but like I say, bank on Eddie to have a plan. The Bledis Low Cup will be something he targets. He's come out and said it. It's maths, mate. The odds, uh, the odds just don't make sense that they haven't won it for as long as they haven't, and uh, they'll be back. So Eddie back on the scene, they in camp, uh, the box are in camp, we've great news that Sia Khaleesi is training, mm. he's on track. But the big story at the moment is Jean Klein and Athia Sneijman. Yeah. Uh, the Munster duo, the South African born and raised Munster duo, they came to Cape Town and absolutely made a statement in Munster's victory against the Stormers. Yes, they did. Uh, Klain was strong, and Athlis Naman, when he came on and played the last hour, 
uh, he just owned. He was so reminiscent of a, a youthful Victor Matfield in how he, he just owned the, the lineup and he brings that extra grunt and physicality. Great to have those two in the mix. Uh, when you look at the depth with an Eben still to come back, a Luit Miller there, a Peter Steff that can play there. Yeah. Um, you know, you've got to say Marvin Ory's way down the pecking order when you look at the caliber of those locks. Definitely. But Klain, you think Ireland are going to think, shit, should we let him go? But the fact that we're even asking that question means the objective has been reached. Like, that's exactly the point, is you bring this guy in, the, the mind games have started, it's World Cup year, you know, this thing is about to kick off. So, so I think it's great they brought him in. I think uh, Jean Klein is a guy who did, who did well here when he was with Province and, and obviously has done well at, at Ireland. And, um, and I think he definitely adds value. He's, a, he's the real deal. He can play. Uh, he's physical. He fits the mold of a classic Springbok lock. I don't know whether he's going to make it to the World Cup, but I wouldn't be upset to see him there. Well, I mean, he played in the World Cup for Ireland in 2019. He does give these box an end to the whole Irish system. Yeah. Uh, a, a masterstroke from, from uh, Rassi and, and Ninov, and I think Ireland may have missed the trick there by not keeping him close to the crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 42 players, he was excluded from that, and he has been informed. So, well done there. I think an, an early victory for Ninov and, and Rassi to get him in. Uh, as we said, great news coming out. We see Sia training so hard. Uh, they think that he'll probably get a game in before the World Cup. Uh, the key is, is he battle hardened by the time the World Cup comes? He's just got to be ready from the quarterfinal onwards. I look back at Eddie's comments and he said they gained half a leather for the rugby championship because then there's nothing in between. It's a 1200 meter sprint, he mate. He said nothing in between until the quarterfinal. <laughs> what is that? Well, mate, Gatlin came out and said it himself. I wish he didn't take the Wales job. <laughs> he's saying he cares about their pool that they're in, that they definitely hilarious. guaranteed a, a one-two position. But he takes over this team that he admits hasn't won anything for a very long time. And straight off, he's talking like they're about to become world champions. I mean, you've got to love that about the guy. It's brilliant. I do. And then across the ditch, you've got a guy who uh, knows they're not going to be world champions. They've announced their squad, the All Blacks 36. Yes. Incredible talent in the back line. We've seen that in Super Rugby Pacific again this season. But where are the forwards? Yeah, it sounds like we're talking about Fiji or Samoa, right? Great backs. Where's the pack? I mean, I yeah, the, the options up front, especially the Type 5. Outside of that hooker that we love, who else is two good it? young props that have come mm -hmm. in. Um, and they've got Artie Sevier, who's a fantastic player. But Artie Sevier, for me, would never make a McCaw, Jerome Kiner, Kieran Reed. Never. Uh, Lustria, he no would way. come off the bench. Yep. And that's their go-to guy. Um, he did play fullback for his club on Saturday, scored a try, had a few good runs. <laughs> Land his minds on the World Cup. <laughs> so nice to see him get a run there. Um, but I looked at, you know, Sam Whitelock, I thought was finished in 2015. And he was. <laughs> he's <laughs> he's just hanging around. It's th he's like the new Adam Wynne-Jones. <laughs> exactly. He just won't go away. Exactly. It's uh, 2023 and he's, they, they're banking on him yeah. to do it, okay? Yeah. Uh, Brody Retallick, Best player in the world at one stage, has never quite been the same, suffered a lot of injuries, went to Japan, not quite reached the same heights. When you pick in a bloke like Bird as one of your locks. Right. Or Scotty Barrett, he's next in line. Oh, right? geez. So I looked again at their, their, their second rows and then obviously their, 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 their back five composition. Yes. And we keep on saying that Jason Ryan did some very special things with those, with those all back forwards a yep. uh, latter part of last year. Yes. But they fell apart at Twickenham. And that's the overriding memory for me is they were 25-6 up, nine minutes to play, and they were hanging on for a 25 all draw against a team we smashed the next week. 100%. So doesn't that add great spice to this World Cup though? In the sense you've got this All Blacks t uh, team coming in without the favourites tag. They're not uh, the guaranteed team to win this thing. They haven't been rolling over teams for two years. You know, it's, kind of, it's, it's, gonna, it's gonna be an interesting tournament. It's beautiful. It's, it's nice to have like uh, law and order restored in terms of how a big tournament should be. Correct. Um, I think we're coming good. Um, there was enough last year to show us that we're there and thereabouts. Yeah. Uh, we just don't need one or two players to go down, which brings me back to the 10 position, okay? <laughs> Alton Yankees has been drafted in because Pollard's not going to play in the opener. Uh, Damien Williams is struggling a bit. Marnie Lebox there. And Alton, fourth cab off the rank. Um, welcome back with open arms, 47 tests over 13 years, raving about him, said he's been there. So has Jesse Krill been there for 10 years. Uh, would I pick them to play in a World Cup final? No, not comfortably. Yeah. Explain the rationale in bringing him back at the yeah, moment. Yeah, I've never really understood the Alton Yankee selection because he doesn't really fit the mold of a classic Bok uh, 10 in some ways. Um, but, I mean, he's had some off-field issues, which I think we're all, we all hoping are behind him. We're rooting for him to come back to the field and, and, and get back to his best. And we want the box to win the World Cup. So we're obviously rooting for Alton to do well if, if and when he gets a chance. 
it's frustrating for me to see that we're in a position where we have have to look to Alton in an emergency situation. We haven't created the depth that we need at 10 to be looking at other guys. Uh, for me, obviously, Damien Williams is a guy I think should have got a lot more opportunities since 2018. And then Monty Leboc is a guy on the back of URC form who will potentially get his shot now during the rugby championship to show what he can do. And let's hope he takes it with both hands. Yeah, well, it goes back to just how poor the Bulls were. That Quirson, Chris Smith, who played all season primarily, not even featuring. Uh, especially Quirson, so much faith was put in him. Was it a case of so much faith being put in a, a schoolboy prodigy, a 21 year old who was gonna conquer the world? And now he's close to 30 and he hasn't conquered that world. Yeah, I, I, I think, you know, Quirson kept on sort of giving hints that maybe his heart wasn't in rugby and people just refused to believe him. <laughs> and I think it kind of played out. You kind of saw a guy who apparently is mercurially talented and is, is a fantastic player, but he doesn't deliver because I don't think his head or his heart is really in it. And so, for me, it was very surprising that Mornay Stan didn't get more of a shout with the Bulls, that they invested so much time in, in Johan Kursen. I know he was beset with injuries and he's had his, his own issues, but the delivery was never there. The potential we heard about, the actual, I didn't see it. And that's why I keep on going back to this obsession with age. And there's always that, that, that mantra, like, when you, you, you trumpet in a 19-year-old, who you believe is in red-hot form and should play. Okay, Kane Moody, for example, yeah. last year. Yeah. And it's like, young enough is good enough. Good enough is young enough. Why don't we have that with older players? Like, good enough is old enough. Or young enough. Spot it's on. It's like 39, 40, 36. Whoa, should we pick him? Yeah. No, let's go and pick a 26-year-old who hasn't got half the talent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And that's why I keep on going back to having someone like a Rompino in the mix. As absurd as it may sound now, why, why don't you use that person to the max, uh, even in a group setup? Mm. Uh, and give yourself that kind of insurance policy as opposed to going with someone because they fifth in the country but they should never even be fifth in the country no absolutely and i think with you know we we talked about age with sam whitelock because you can see the guy is not getting around the field like a spring chicken anymore whereas with ron pino he is the the leading player at the cheetahs they are in the curry cup final one thing ron pino can do is split the uprights we've spoken about the importance and the value of a goal kick it's surprising to me in south african rugby that uh we, we, we don't see the value in this guy who can split the uprights anytime he wants to. We've made some crazy some crazy calls in the past couple of seasons. We've had to trial Fuff de Klerk as our goal kicker, Chesson Colby as our goal kicker. I don't even know, apparently Stephen Kitsoff was in the mix. I just think it's crazy we're not looking at this. This is a guy who has a legacy of goal kicking. He's very experienced, very versatile player, still in good nick. And we seem to be turning to other options that maybe the flaws are more obvious to me. So, yeah. Ron Pinar to the box. At this stage, would seem a bit desperate and a bit of an emergency call, but that's kind of the position we're in. You have to consider things like that. Yeah, I know, look, there's, there's going to be a lot of rugby played as well between now and that opening match of the World Cup. We've got the, the rugby championship, we've got three or four other friendlies. Uh, seven matches down the line, you may find five or six players don't make it to the World Cup because of injury. It's a contact sport. I know people don't want to make it a contact sport anymore, but it is a contact sport. Injuries are always going to be a part of it. I'm just saying to the South African public as well, kind of open your eyes and uh, acknowledge brilliance when it's there, acknowledged longevity. Ron Pino made his debut in the Curry Cup in 2004. He plays on Saturday as the main man for the Cheetahs. And next year, 2024, 20 years later, some of the kids playing weren't born <laughs> when he made his debut. That's how, how well he's done. And wherever yeah. he's gone, he's been a success. So we always kind of acknowledge the, the good and the great ones once they're gone. Let's acknowledge them while they're here. I mean, mate, if Franz Stein's knees weren't buggered, he'd be going to, this, to the World Cup. Exactly. Irrelevant of his age. And I tell you now, I, if Mornay Stein hadn't decided, well, you know what, clearly no one wants me anymore. Uh, that's why he went to Australia and sat, on the, sat in the stands for six weeks Correct. and decided that's the end for international of that. rugby. Yeah. He's been sitting in the stands for the Bulls most of the season. I would still pick Mornay Stein in an extended Springbok squad. Definitely. Uh, and I'd pick Ron Pina, uh, in terms of a training squad of 40. They just bring such composure and they bring such experience and they've done it before time and again. Yeah, they've lived the big moments, they haven't just talked about them, they've walked them, absolutely. Alright, big stories on SRK Magazine this week, the biggest one? Uh, pina has been up there, pina has been up there, we've got uh, Antoine Dupont surfing on the top 14 uh, trophy uh, in, in the sea, which is quite interesting. <laughs> um, and yeah, so like I said, Ron Pinar sticking around for another season at the Cheetahs has been, has been pretty prominent. A lot of chat around him, in spite of a lot of debate. Yeah, and the Frenchies, I mean, uh, uh, just so, so much success in Europe, and obviously the top 14 is, is a special final. 
Dylan Leitz, uh, Raymond Rule. Dylan Leitz been outstanding all season. Very much but so. But one tackle away from winning the double. <laughs> Unfortunately, he did miss it. Yeah. Uh, but a great season Fantastic. for Dylan Leitz. Um, and, and Raymond Rule has also really found a home at La Rochelle. Yeah, no, it's, and that's a great success story, one we should celebrate. Hopefully, we see both of them back at... Um, Cape Town Stadium to play the Stormers. Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, playing against Storms, I wouldn't mind seeing uh, da- uh, the Dylan Lates back at the Stormers. Oh, mate! In the foreseeable future, dreams can come true. All right, just before we wrap today's one up, because we're not going to talk Curry Cup tomorrow, we're going to talk World Cup under twenties. Okay. Uh, cheaters, Pumas, you going two guns? You going Pinot? I'm going with two guns, man. I love the underdogs. They did it uh, last season. They're going to do it again. I'm back in the Pumas to ambush the Cheaters again. Five okay. points. Five points. I got Rob Pinot to be sensational. He, to have his uh, kicking boots on and to really deflate Jimmy's big arms, 15 points to the Cheetahs and a Curry Cup victory. <laughs>